After recently acquiring my first ever real camera, the one that I'm filming this with right now, I realized very quickly that there were a lot of accessories and a lot of things I needed to go along with that camera, and I was going to need some place to keep them all. And also, if I was going to go out and try to film anything or take pictures, I needed a good camera bag to take with me. What I didn't know was that there were so many options covering a huge range of prices, and it was really difficult for me to find one that I actually liked and that I thought would suit my needs. But I finally did, and I want to show it to you now. It is the Domkey F2 Original Shoulder Bag. I purchased this several months ago now, and I've been using it all the time that I've had my new camera. And I have to say that I like this bag a lot, and I'd like to give you a little bit of a review. I want to go over all the different features of this bag, the price, the different options there are for colors, some of the competition that this bag has, and I guess I just want to show you why I decided that the Domkey F2 shoulder bag was the right one for me. Now, there is a crazy storm going on outside the window right now, so you may hear some extreme rain, some extreme wind. Hopefully you can just bear with me. But let's get in to the Domkey F2 Original Shoulder Bag. On the Tiffin website, you'll find the Domkey bags for $203.99, supposedly on sale from $254.99 US. But don't buy them on the Tiffin site. If you go to B&H, you can find the original F2 Shoulder Bag in a multitude of colors for $119.99. It's the same on Amazon and places like Adorama. Um, you can see the different colors. There is a black version. There is a black nylon version, which is a bit more at $155.99. There is olive drab, like I have, and there's also sand. There is a rugged wear version that you can purchase as well. That's a little bit more and it has a waxed sort of canvas material. And there is also a camouflage version which is 14807, and that is a nylon material. I originally purchased the bag in the nylon camo because it was a limited edition. I thought it would look cool, and I also have a camelback backpack that's in the exact same multicam nylon look. But I didn't really like the thickness of the material. I actually prefer the original with the kind of canvas thicker material here, and it apparently wears really well as well. You can wash it and it'll kind of age like an old pair of jeans. I went to bnh.com and I searched for camera shoulder bags and I put in some of the more popular brands that have a little bit more of a classic look. So for example, Billingham, which is a very popular brand, you can see the prices, 248 for the Hadley Small, uh, holds a small DSL or mirrorless with one extra lens. Um, and look at all these prices, 140 for the small, 247 for the small, this is Hadley, Hadley. So you can see that in general, Billingham's are a lot more expensive than the Domkey. They have a similar classic look, but maybe a bit more premium materials with the leather. Um, and then if we look at another very popular brand, Peak Design, this is a more modern look. People seem to really enjoy these. If you ever look at any YouTube videos where people are talking about camera bags, they often mention Peak Design. You can see the 13-inch Everyday Messenger, $179.95. The 15-inch is $199.95. So when looking at the prices of a lot of these bags that are sort of similar in function, maybe not necessarily even carrying as much as the Domkey F2, the prices are quite a bit more. Now, the Peak Design bags will offer a bit more protection. There's more rigid foam in there. Um, but the Billings or the Billingham bags don't necessarily have more protection than the Domkey bag does but they are quite a bit more expensive. So after looking at these, the $120 price tag for the F2 doesn't seem quite as steep. When I was looking online trying to find a bag, there were so many different options and there are some that are very popular. You'll see them on YouTube all the time, bags by Peak Design. There are the more high-end bags by companies like Billingham. And I didn't really know where to start or what exactly I was looking for. So I started looking for just a classic bag, a bag that didn't seem like it was just screaming there is a camera inside me all the time. And I'm just someone who prefers things that are a little bit more timeless. So when I came across the Domkey, I'm not even sure how I found it. I think maybe I was just looking on B&H going through their camera bags. And I found the original 
F2, but then I also saw the F6. The F6 is a little smaller than the F2. It doesn't have these side pockets here. Um, it's mostly just this central area with the main compartment. And it really appealed to me. I just liked the canvas construction. I liked the fact that it wasn't super rigid. It has protection inside and we'll get into that. I'll be showing you that. But it looks just more like a satchel, like maybe an army surplus bag or something that you could find at Goodwill, which may or may not sound like a good thing, but for me it definitely was. And it was cool to read some of the history about this bag. Jim Domke was a photojournalist for the Philadelphia Inquirer in the 70s. And how it used to work back then, before all the myriad camera bags that we have now were on the market, they would mostly just work out of their trunks. And each photographer would have a car um, that was assigned to them and they would have all their equipment in the trunk and then when they go out on a story they would just grab things out of the trunk, things that they needed. But what happened is the Inquirer decided that they were not going to do that anymore. They were going to have a car pool and so everyone would share vehicles and they would just take out or check out a vehicle when they had a story or when they were going to go on assignment, which meant that they could no longer keep all their equipment in the trunk. And so old Jim decided he wanted to try to find a bag to keep his, a cam keep his camera equipment and a bag that he could work out of. I think he was looking at different fishing bags, things that people were using at the time. And he finally decided to ask a local company to make a bag for him. He developed the design. He had them make the bag and then he ended up making more for some of the other photographers at the Philadelphia Inquirer. It became really popular. He started offering it, I think through the paper originally and after a while was selling so many that he couldn't really keep up. Ended up forming the company, Domke, and I think they were sold in 1990. He ran it from 76 to 1990 and then sold it to Tiffin. Tiffin still owns them now. They make filters and all sorts of different accessories for cameras. So this has a long history, a long heritage. It's been used by a lot of photo photojournalists throughout the years. It is in fact the official bag of the White House Photographers Association, I think. And in fact, once I had actually seen this bag, I realized that I had seen it before. There is a documentary, I think just called The Photographers, that's about National Geographic photographers. And it was made in the 80s, I believe. It's on YouTube now, I think you can still find it. And a lot of the photographers that they showed on that documentary were using a Domke bag like this. So it has some classic looks, it has some heritage behind it. But let's look into some of the features here. It is $119.90, that's what I purchased it for. That was on B&H, but you can find it on Amazon for around the same price. It's supposed to fit one to two film or digital SLR cameras or mirrorless cameras, along with some lenses and extra accessories. It has quite a few different pockets, but let's go close up. I wanna open this up. I'm gonna show you what I have in the bag right now, and I'll just give you a good idea of what you may be able to fit in this bag. So here's my Domke. What do I have in it right now? Well, not a whole lot at the moment because I have my camera filming this video um, and I've only got one lens right now. But you can see this divider. You have four different areas you can put lenses. This is removable with Velcro. We also have room on either side. You can move the divider wherever you want within the main compartment. Um, and there are other dividers that you could find as well that maybe divide it up a little more. There are some aftermarket ones you can find. Inside here right now, I have a strap. This is a Peak Design uh, slide light camera strap. I have some microfiber cloths. These are just hanging out in some of these lens compartments right now because I don't have any extra lenses. Looks like I have a <laughs> case for a memory card that escaped from this zipper pocket that you have in the back here which is quite handy. In here, I keep various things, mostly batteries and memory cards. So this zips and it goes the entire length and width of this back flap. So you have that pocket here, you have the main compartment. I have this central divider sort of offset. I put my camera body here and then in here, I keep a filter case like this, it has a variable ND filter, it has a step-up ring, um, and I think a polarizer in there right now as well. And, oh no, actually this is my B and W or B plus W variable ND filter that's here. 
I also have something else that has escaped from this main pocket. That's one thing, or this zip pocket. If you have this zipper pocket unzipped and you don't remember to close it, and then you close the flap, you'll find everything will fall into the main compartment. But anyway, I keep filters here on the side. I have this front pocket here. You get two different front pockets. This one has my Canon battery charger for my EOS R6. I don't have anything in this pocket. Oh wait, I'm lying. I have the cap for the body and the uh, back lens cap for my 24 to 105 f4 Canon lens that I'm using on the camera right now. You also have these two side pockets. In this one, I have a cleaning kit. This is made by Altura, which has various things that you may or may not need. A uh, little ball blower, brushes, some uh, cleaning fluid. I think I have sensor cleaners in here and stuff like that. So that goes on the side quite nicely in this pocket. Velcro there. Velcro on this pocket. Here I have a uh, Lastolite um, gray card slash white balance card. It's one of those that expand out or fold up. I'm not gonna do that right now. I also have a ball head that I use with my, well, I'll show that, show that to you in a second. This is just a newer ball head that's fairly cheap on amazon.com. Um, also has an Arca Swiss plate there. In the back, if we turn it around, you have this pocket, which does not have any closure or zipper. You could put, you know, maps if you're at, if it was 1974 and you were somewhere uh, in the Congo photographing for National Geographic. Uh, what I keep in here is this, a switch pod mini tripod. I use that sometimes with or without the ball head that I have here. Um, I would have more lenses in here and I will have more lenses in here once I actually get more lenses. But for now, ugh, I think that's plenty to be getting on with. Let me see if I can put everything away here. I think you could easily fit two camera bodies in here with a couple, maybe two or three other lenses, depending on how big your lenses are. In the future, I'm assuming I'm gonna have, you know, my main camera body here. I will probably have two or three lenses and that's probably all I will ever have or ever need for my purposes. Some of the features of this bag though, it is a water resistant cotton canvas. Now water resistant is the important thing there. I've had this out in a fairly moderate rain and nothing has leaked through into the inside. When you have the flap closed, it's been fairly watertight. Well, not watertight, but water resistant as they say. But I could imagine if you were spending hours in a huge downpour that eventually the top fabric would get soaked and you would have some leaking into the inner compartment. Um, I never intend to be out in rain that long with my camera bag, but if I were, maybe I would use some sort of waterproof cover, just put it over the top here and then close down the strap or the top flap. That would probably be okay. You have six pockets, the two in the front, the one here, and then two on either side. And then I guess this main compartment would be considered a pocket. It's made in the US. You have a removable carry strap right here that holds to these D-rings, which are kind of extra D-rings. You have your main strap here, which is obviously adjustable. And then the cool thing is they have it sort of impregnated with rubber right here and so if you have that on your shoulder it's not going to slide all over the place and you could always just reverse that if you wanted to. You also have some o-rings on the back here. I actually just have a little Nikon microfiber cloth hanging from one of them but you could put some sort of strap on there. Uh, maybe use straps to make this into a backpack if you wanted to. I don't know how comfortable that would be or you could maybe hang a tripod or something off of that. Um, this ugh, inner compartment, like I mentioned, is adjustable. You can take out this insert. It also has a pad on the bottom, which is fairly rigid and fairly thick. 
You could take that out as well if you want. You could put something even more padded if you wished. The bottom is fairly rigid and fairly strong. So I have no issue putting lenses in here, putting my camera in here. You don't have a ton of protection from the front. The sides are pretty well protected because you have these side pockets. And then this is all foam around this insert. So I can't imagine a situation where this bag wouldn't offer enough protection to my camera equipment. I suppose if I dropped it out of a moving vehicle, that would be an issue, but otherwise it seems totally fine to me and just enough protection. And the fact that it's not so rigid is actually something that I appreciate. I like the fact that the bag can sort of form to my body as I'm wearing it. It makes it way less fatiguing to carry around. When you have the bag on, it conforms really nicely to your hip and ends up being quite a bit more comfortable to carry than some of the rigid bags I've tried. The other thing I like is that when you want to actually be working out of the bag, you're taking photographs, you want to switch your lenses, you want to put on a filter, all you have to do is open it up, you pop the flap back, and then you have this nice, I guess, table set out for you where you can pick whatever components you need out of your case. Um, you have access to all the different pockets. It just makes things a lot more quick and a lot more easy to work with. One thing that you do have to be careful of, though, is the fact that this bag can hold a lot. And that's both a good thing, but also kind of a bad thing. Because if you load this to the absolute brim, if you shove in everything that you can possibly fit into this bag, you will find that it's probably a bit heavier than you want hanging off of one shoulder like this. Even though the strap is fairly wide and fairly comfortable when the bag is just moderately full, if it's absolutely bursting, you will have some discomfort on your shoulder here. But they do offer an optional accessory. It's like the mailman strap. It's an extra padded piece that you can put on the strap here. I find that if I just am reasonable with the amount of weight I put in the bag, it's not an issue. For the most part, it's very comfortable. I just really like how it conforms, how it's soft-sided. It's not this rigid thing that's just hanging off my back. It just kind of molds to me and it moves where I move. Quite good. Pretty much everything you need and nothing you don't. I really like the design. I think it's really well thought out and it's just a great package altogether. So there you go, the Domke Original F2 shoulder bag. I love this bag. I think it's fantastic. The utility, the form, the function, everything about it just suits me perfectly. It may not have as much protection as you're looking for. It's not completely waterproof. Um, the main compartment isn't completely sealed up. So those are some things that you may have to keep in mind. But for the price and the function and just the looks of this bag, I think it's great. So thank you so much for watching this review of the Domke F2 Original Shoulder Bag. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. I'll see you later.